Drama and life can also play out in the church. In our last story, the conflict at Jericho City of Praise began with the death of the pastor. But in our next amazing story, the rise of Houston's Ralph Douglas West began with the stress of a birth and led to a congregation of nearly 20,000 people. It's Palm Sunday at Brook Hollow Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, also known as the Church Without Walls. And Pastor Ralph Douglas West is teaching the gospel. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 28. Pastor West is a true expository preacher. He takes his message straight from the Bible. He gives you something to keep you going through the week. He makes you feel the Holy Spirit. He makes you feel like you're walking through the pages of the Bible. The story of this church began with the birth of its pastor's child 25 years ago. Ralph Douglas West was an assistant pastor at a small family church in Houston when a conflict arose over the direction of that church. Just as his wife was about to go into labor, he was fired. He lost his salary, his health insurance, and his way. But just for a moment. Yeah, it was, it was one of those defining moments uh, in my life. Some 25 years ago, I pastored a church in Houston, and um, it, it was an issue of leadership style. Uh, I saw church as growing and people expanding and reaching, and the church where I pastored was more of a community church. It was more of a family church, and it really just posed a threat that these people who are here about to take over our domain, and that wasn't my purpose. And, and that caused a strict conflict, you know. And the only way that people know to deal with conflict, they start lashing out different ways, and verbally lashing out, and, you know, and <laughs> cutting insurance, not getting paid, things like that. And these are not evil people. They're not wicked people. I think folk who stand outside of the church looking in, they really don't understand the matrix of the church that these communities are made up of people who have prayed, struggled, given, worked. And then you get a young guy like me at that time in my 20s who come in, and some of the decisions I made were not the most mature decisions. If I could uh, rewind, I would have made those decisions, but I would have made them quite differently. I would have had conversations. I would have asked about the history. And that was some of what uh, birthed a lot of the anxiety. But as a young pastor, surely you had to be standing there going, man, what is going on here? You, you cut the insurance off. My wife is having a kid. That's the last thing you would think uh, church folks would do. Yeah, yeah, I did. I thought that. <laughs> it was kind of embittering at the moment, you know, in some ways. It was. Made me a little testy. <laughs> <laughs> now, coming out of that, for you, were you struggling with, man, do I want to go through this stuff again? Yeah, that is the pastoral conundrum right there, because I really wanted to just get out of pastoral ministry, not ministry. I was very clear that God had called me to Christian ministry for a lifetime. I was clear that, and I knew that preaching ministry was what God had called me to. But the pastoral ministry, I felt, I did question whether that's where I was supposed to be. For you was the question of, wait a minute, I'm not, I didn't come here to be a caretaker, yeah. but I, I still have a vision in terms of how we can grow and move and prosper. Absolutely. One of the great pastoral passages that helped me with that is the story of Israel, the Old Testament church on the move. They've been liberated. They come to this real crisis point. And that is, do we stand still, look at the Red Sea? Do we go back? to Egypt in oppression, or do we move forward? Pastor Ralph Douglas West is a man on the move. We have six services each Sunday, three campuses. The services are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm traveling back and forth from north to south on the campuses. That's where our members are, you know. They were there, and so I'm just going to where they are. For so many years, they came to where I am. Now I'm going to where they are. Now, so now you have this this back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> yeah, back and rough. forth. You know, it's like a track meet every, yeah. every Sunday. <laughs> but the reality is, when you now think back to the drama in that first church, yeah, to going to Beaumont, to starting a church in a living room, then a hotel, then all of a sudden now, do you even sometimes sit back and go, okay, this is, this is unbelievable. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, you know, I'm asked often, did you ever think it would be like this? No, because I didn't grow up in anything like this. So, so the, what is now the existing church would become uh, for, for the children and youth? No, we're building another building. Yeah, building a whole other building for children and youth. Really? Yeah. We call it mega church. I don't think our church is a mega church. We might fit the model in terms of numbers and size, but I just like to call it the church. You know, I'm not trying to be adversarial about that. I just like calling it the church. Uh, there are times I sit down and I marvel at the mystery and the glory of God, what he's done, and that he'll use somebody like me to do it. That's not self-deprecation. I really, really mean that because the Lord could use anybody who wants to do whatever he wants to do. That's the first thing. And then the next thing is I think back on those dramatic moments. I mean, real tension moments in my past as a young pastor. And now I know that those were the fires that really burned to purify me to make me a pastor. I'm a lot more tolerant a lot more patient, more understanding of people and people in their past and their history. I'm really, really tolerant of that. And what I'm trying to do now is to nurture and mature our congregation. Now, you're going to get rid of one of those services because, you know, you, you got three here, you got two over there. No, I'm trying to keep all of them, actually. <laughs> when we follow the blueprint, God's biblical blueprint for the church, you go into the world, you preach the gospel, you teach, you baptize. You just hope and pray that if I reach people, people will start reaching people. If I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, then my living won't be in vain.